Welcome to Book of Acts Now Global School and Global Church. We're glad you're here with us today as we're continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and if you don't have a representation of them, you can find that on HebrewForChristians.com. And a couple times through, uh, going through the alphabet, you'll begin to recognize the letters and what they mean. And we just do one per week, so people have time to, um, to process and absorb and, and learn these letters and what they mean. We use different words from Scripture where these letters are in use, so you can see what the Bible writers had in mind when uh, they were using the building blocks of the Word of God. So today we're looking at, uh, looks like a, uh, an upside-down G. Uh, it's pay, and um, it has, of course, the, uh, the P sound. And it means to speak, to speak with the mouth, to open, uh, to speak a word. And so let's take a look at some biblical terms that use this. So miracle or wonder. And you see reading from right to left, you have the pay here, the lamed, and the aleph. And so each of these have a meaning. To speak, this, uh, the lamed means authority. This is the father or the first and so what does it mean? Well, a miracle or a wonder to speak the authority of the Father. You know, this is what Christ Yeshua had in mind when he said, In my name you will speak and cast out devils. In my name you will heal the sick. Why? Because his name has authority. And when you speak his authority by speaking his name, it will produce a miracle. It will produce what God said it will produce. And so we have to stand by faith in his word that he meant what he said, he said what he meant, and when you speak what he spoke, you'll see the answer to what you speak in your prayer. And so this is pronounced P-E-L-E, -E, and there's no sound here with the Aleph, and so it's um, Pali. And uh, also, just the, uh, the two letters here mean stop, and so... The idea is that with a miracle, it will cause you to stop your mouth. When you see the miracle working power of God, it's like, well, what else can you say? Just acknowledge Him. Okay, to pray, um, this, again, we have three letters. We have the pay. We have A, L, A, R, E, L. And so it's Palel. And so what does it mean? It means to speak the authority of the staff. Now, this, uh, the Lamed can mean authority or shepherd staff. And so what I did with this is that I took both of those meanings. To speak the authority of the shepherd staff is to pray. Well, how does that apply to prayer? Well, the shepherd, who is the shepherd? Okay, that's Christ Yeshua. He's, he is the shepherd, right? And so his staff represents authority. Uh, in the 23rd Psalms, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That shepherd's staff was used to protect the sheep. Uh, one end of it could be used as a weapon against the wolf or the wild animal. The other with a crook could be used to rescue the sheep or the lamb when the lamb fell off into the ditch. And so to pray is to speak the authority of the shepherd's staff. Wow. Does that mean when you pray, you should pray with authority? Yes, Yes, it does. And one of the reasons is if you're using the Word of God, the promises of God, as a part of your prayer, and you're standing on those promises, you're releasing the authority because you're speaking His Word back to Him. Listen, this is one of the most effective ways to pray. Repeat the Word of God and the promises of God back to Him, and it releases the authority that's in it. So if you want peace, for example, you go to the promise. In Philippians chapter uh, 4, that says, I, I believe it begins with verse 4. It says, um, be anxious for nothing, that's God speaking, but let all your requests be made known unto uh, him, and he will give to you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And it, it will guard your heart and mind in Christ Yeshua. That's praying the word of God, the promises of God back to him and releases the authority that's already there in the word how many know that the word of god is living it's not a dead ancient writing it is still alive and whatever it speaks to is alive 
And so when you release the living word of God, it releases what is in the promise. Who? When we understand that, we'll begin to use the word of God more effectively and see more happen. Okay, redeem. Uh, here we have three letters for the idea of uh, what does it mean to be redeemed. We have the pay. This is uh, the Dalit speaks about the door. The idea is you look at this half, the other leg for the door casing is missing, but you get the idea this is a door. And the door was where they applied the blood. That's where covenant was made at the door. And so re being redeemed has something to do with covenant of God and the blood. And this is to declare. So the mouth at the door declares salvation. It declares what the blood speaks of. And that's how you are redeemed. Pada. That's how you pronounce that. P-A-D-A. Pada. Okay. To sanctify or to separate. Okay. Again, we have uh, the pay, which means to speak, right? And then we have race, which means what? If you look at your, uh, your alphabet, race speaks of the highest person. And then again, we have the Dalit, which is door. And so to speak the highest person at the door of covenant, why would that sanctify you or separate you out? Listen, when you come to the place of, of covenant and you invoke the blood, you speak the blood in faith, God begins to separate you out and set you aside for a holy purpose. Amen. And, and it's called a parad. P-A-R-A-D. Parad. To speak the highest person at the door. When you confess him and you speak of what he did, it will begin to transform you and, and cause you to be sanctified. <clears throat> and finally, we have the word fruit. The word fruit here means to speak the highest person of the highest person's works. Pari. That's how you pronounce that. Pari. P E R E. Uh, e. And so uh, this last little uh, mark here represents the elbow. It's the work of the hand. And so to speak of the highest person's work is what the fruit is about. Now, <clears throat> this says something to us as to the importance of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, when they're operating in you and me, it's speaking about the work of our Savior who's at work in us. So can you remember some of the fruits of the Spirit? What's the first fruit of the Spirit? It's love, isn't it? Galatians 5.22. Love, peace, joy, yeah. And so if Christ is in us, we should begin to see the fruits of the Holy Spirit who is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so what God actually begins to do is to take out the works of uh, the flesh and the works of the enemy and replace it with the works of his son. Well, what does that look like? Well, if you've got the first fruit of perfect love work in your life, 1 John 4.18 says it will cast out all fear. So you may have in your, your walk, your journey on earth, you may have experienced rejection and fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of abandonment. Well, when God's love begins to come into your life through the Holy Spirit, it, that love will cast out the wounds and cast out the works of the flesh so that we see people being perfected in the love of God, walking in power, walking in love, not in woundedness. Come on now. That's what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are all about. It's the works. How is that possible? Because Christ Yeshua on Calvary, he defeated fear of death, fear of man, fear of failure, fear of rejection. Because they rejected him on Calvary, but he overcame it. And, be, and he said, Father, it is finished. All of those works of darkness and the works of the flesh, those were defeated. The work was done. It was finished. And victory was declared from Mount Calvary. And you and I stand in the shadow of Mount Calvary. And we could receive all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we could walk in his love and in victory. Wow. See, you get the deeper meaning. You get the deeper meaning when you come into the Hebrew and understand how these words 
are impacted by the letters from Hebrew that are being used. And when Yeshua was walking the earth, he was not speaking English. How many know that? He was not speaking Greek. Now, some of the Greek manuscripts survived, and, and so we, we look at the Greek when we're translating the New Testament because we didn't have, um, you know, the Hebrew manuscripts. But Hebrew scholars have gone back in there and translated that. So we can go back into the Hebrew. So if you want to know what, what Yeshua meant when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, you need to go into the Hebrew that look and look at that because it's not the same as the Greek. He is the way. He is the way maker. And so that's what we're doing as we look at these words. We're going back into the meaning in Hebrew to understand what was the Savior talking about. What does it mean to have the fruits of the Spirit in your life? And we begin to understand what Yeshua was trying to teach us. Amen. To redeem us. The mouth of, at the door is declared. We have redemption. You know, Christ Yeshua said, if the Son of Man be lifted up, he's able to draw all men into him. He was actually bringing the imagery of when the children of Israel were dying from snake bites out in the wilderness because of their rebellion. And they were told Moses created this, this brass serpent and put it on a pole and lifted it up. Now you say, well, wait a minute, that's a symbol of the enemy. Well, it's a symbol of sin. And so if they would look on that serpent, they would be healed. Why? Because our sin bearer took our sins to Calvary and he was lifted up. So when Yeshua said, if the Son of Man be lifted up, he's able to draw men into him. That's a Hebrew concept. comes straight out of the Old Testament in its application of that imagery uh, into the gospel as Yeshua used it. Now, if you are not able to go back and pick up what's in the Old Testament and apply it to the life of Christ, Yeshua, and, and the salvation he brought, you're, it's like sitting on a, a stool that's missing a leg. You don't get a full revelation. You don't get the full support of the, the revelation that comes from Scripture when you say, well, I'm a New Testament script, uh, Christian. I don't need the Old Testament. Yes, you do. Because you can't understand who Christ was and why he came and, and how he fulfilled prophecy without going back into the imagery and the prophecies of the Old Testament. That's why the Bible says those who believe the prophets will prosper. Because you need to understand what they prophesied about Messiah. And so if you're listening to me today and you're one of those who's been taught you just only need the New Testament, you need to rethink that and go back and take the whole word of God. And apply it. Because then we begin to see who is Yeshua. Who is the Messiah. Why did he come? What did he fulfill? Do you remember um, after his death and resurrection. Uh, Christ was walking on the road to Emmaus. And he found a couple of disciples. And uh, they were grieving. And, and uh, they didn't recognize him. And so he said. What, what are you talking about that's making you so sad. And cry as you're walking. Now they were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they said, well, are you a stranger that you have not heard of what the events ha uh, have taken place over this weekend? How, how that uh, Christ, who was mighty indeed and it works, was crucified by the Romans and we thought he was the Messiah. Now we don't know what to do. And so what did he do? It says that Yeshua went back through all of the prophecies in the Old Testament and explained how they applied to the Messiah and why the Messiah needed to come and die uh, he, he wasn't coming as a conqueror to free them from the Roman yoke. He was coming to free them from sin. And they had misunderstood that. So by going through the Word of God in the Old Testament in particular and showing how these prophecies actually pointed to the Messiah, they were able to understand and reframe who was the Messiah. Why did he come and why did he have to die? And he will rise again. And, and so when they got to where they were going in Emmaus, he was just going to keep walking. They said, no, 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 wait, come in and dine with us. He sat down at the table. Um, they allowed him to offer a prayer to bless the bread that they were going to break. And can you imagine? He stuck forth those hands, and they still had the nail prints. The wounds from the nails on Calvary were there showing in his hands. And as soon as he reached out those nail-pierced hands, it says their eyes were opened and he vanished from their midst. Now, he still wasn't going to be there physically with them. 
But they were so excited because now they understood the Word of God in a new way. That's what happens when we begin to get into the whole Word of God and we understand the Hebrew, we understand their deeper meaning, we understand how all of these things apply to Christ. Our eyes will be open. And so they ran as fast as they could back to Jerusalem, to the upper room, to declare, we have seen Him on the way. Ha, huh, because why? He is the way. And the way maker is the one who gives you salvation. So I hope you're blessed today as we, we've talked about pay. We've talked about the relevance of the Hebrew and how we need to go back in and take time to study the Word of God. You see, you can be spoon-fed. You can listen to the preacher on the TV or the radio or even at church. But unless we learn how to dig for ourselves in the Word of God and get that rhema revelation, that re revelation from the Holy Spirit, all we're doing is receiving something that somebody else has chewed on, somebody else has digested, and then given to us. We need the ability to digest the Word of God ourselves. So may the Lord bless us this week as we are doing that and we're understanding, maybe contemplating what pay means and what does it mean that we understand the miracle of, of God is to speak of the Father and His authority and stand on His Word and believe His love, believe in His compassion and goodness, and we'll see the glory manifested. We're talking about that later today in the service. What does it mean to pray and speak about the authority of God? Because you know how to understand and stand in the authority of His Word. What does it mean to be redeemed? Because we can go to the door where covenant was made, and we can declare the blood, and we can begin to see God work in our lives. What does it mean to be sanctified and set apart for a holy purpose because we're speaking of what our Savior did at the door and we're standing in the door applying the blood in our homes and in our lives. And then we have the work of the Spirit in us and we're speaking about the work of the highest person who through His Spirit wants to release the fruits of the, of the Spirit in us so that He is alive in us and His works are alive in us and perfect love cast out all fear in our lives. And we can see anger removed. We can, we can see anything opposite of peace removed. Anxiety, worry, anxiousness. If these things are dominating your life, come to Mount Calvary, exchange them for the peace of God that passes all understanding, the shalom of God, the shalom of Christ, so nothing's missing, nothing's broken, and anxiousness, worry, doubt, all of these things go out of your life because the peace and shalom of Christ begins to rule in you through the Holy Spirit. And so Christ is reproduced in you and me. Amen. Thank you, Father, for giving us revelation on the letter P today. As we can begin to understand how we can speak your word. How we can speak of the works of, of our Savior. And we can begin to see him at work in our lives. Bless us this day. May we bear much fruit for the kingdom of God this year. Yeshua's name, amen. Hallelujah!